One day, Eiji gathered the courage to tell a girl named Asakawa that he liked her. At first, she seemed happy about it, and even said nice things about him. But suddenly, her feelings changed, and she told him she felt disgusted by the idea of dating him. Asia was heartbroken, and he felt incredibly sad as he watched her run away. The next day, Asia's friend, friend number one, tried to make him feel better and help him deal with his rejection. Despite friend number one's attempts to cheer Asia up, they didn't work. He then mentioned that Asia had been rejected 100 times, and he was amazed at how strong Asia was. Curious about Asia's past, friend number one asked when Asia had first told someone he liked them. Asia remembered a time when he was just eight months old. Asia remembered that early memory of rejection. At that moment, he felt a strong desire to have a girlfriend. He just wanted to hold hands and feel someone else's heartbeat. Perplexed by Asia's yearning, friend number one couldn't comprehend why Asia faced so many rejections. Feeling disheartened, Asia went to the god of love, begging for a chance at happiness in high school with a girlfriend. Surprisingly, he heard a mysterious voice promising to help him. As he stared at the offering table, he saw the face of a man. Confused, Asia thought the man was a thief trying to steal the offerings. The man corrected him, revealing that he was the god of the shrine. He tried to reassure Asia, explaining that it was destined for him to meet the perfect girl in high school. The god went on to explain that when soulmates meet, they both feel a shock that runs through their bodies. Trying to understand, Asia repeated what the god had said, unintentionally irritating him in the process. The god went on, explaining that soulmates were meant to meet at a specific moment in their lives. Asia, showing a hint of cunning, questioned this concept, wondering if everyone should have a soulmate. The god clarified that not everyone was destined to have a soulmate. It was a privilege reserved for a fortunate few. Asia understood, although he couldn't help but wonder if he would truly find his soulmate in high school. To his surprise, the god assured Asia that he would indeed encounter a total of 100 soulmates. One month had passed since the encounter with the god of love, and Asia found himself at his high school's admission ceremony. On his way to class, he accidentally bumped into two girls. As the three of them locked eyes, an inexplicable connection seemed to occur, leaving them all puzzled. He wondered if this peculiar sensation meant that these two girls were his soulmates. Despite his racing thoughts, he tried to act calm, not wanting to reveal his inner turmoil. With determination, he approached the two girls. Shy in his presence, the girl with pink hair suddenly claimed she had sprained her foot and dramatically dropped to the floor. Concerned, Asia asked if she was genuinely hurt, feeling guilty for potentially hurting his soulmate during their first encounter. Surprisingly, the pink-haired girl was delighted by his concern, even though they were strangers. Unbeknownst to Aju, the other girl felt a pang of jealousy witnessing their interaction. To compete for his attention, she, too, claimed to have sprained her foot. Panicking, Aju began to hit himself. Seeing his distress, the girls quickly got up, stopping him from continuing his self-punishment. Aju asked if they were genuinely injured, but the girls pretended to be in pain, leading him to carry both of them to the infirmary, unwittingly becoming entangled in a complex and confusing situation. Both girls clung to him, leaving him utterly bewildered. While walking, they encountered two other girls who spoke of a unique kind of love in their school. The story went that there was a field with pink clovers in the courtyard. Confessing your feelings by giving a four-leaf clover found there supposedly guaranteed that the person would agree to date you. Strangely, upon hearing this, the girls' ankle pains seemed to miraculously fade, and they remembered they had a prior commitment. After class, Aju found himself helping a teacher search for his contact lenses, a task that unexpectedly took four hours. Frustrated, Aju regretted missing the chance to talk to the girls he had met earlier as he strolled through the school corridors, never imagining he would end up in such strange situations. Aju felt a mix of surprise and confusion. He couldn't believe the girls had been searching for the four-leaf clover for four hours, just like he had spent that time looking for contact lenses with the teacher. Seeing their determination, Asia wondered if this quest was somehow meant for him. Deciding not to just watch, Asia approached Inda and asked if finding the four-leaf clover was very hard. She tried to dismiss it, claiming she wasn't looking for the clover, but he sensed her embarrassment and understood the truth. He then inquired about Hakari's whereabouts, to which Inda replied that she had probably gone to the bathroom. Changing the subject, 
Aju offered Inda a drink, thinking she might be tired from the clover search. Perplexed by his kindness, Inda questioned his motives. Despite this, she reluctantly accepted the drink to avoid wasting it. After Inda left, Hakari appeared and questioned why Aju was still at school. He explained that he had noticed them searching for the clover and had brought them something to drink. When he offered the can to Hakari, she felt the same shock they had experienced earlier. To make the situation more intimate, she suggested they drink it together, considering it an indirect kiss. However, Aju pulled out a 190 milliliters can from his pocket, explaining that he thought a 350 milliliters can would be too much. Hakari attempted to calculate, arguing that half of 350 milliliters was 175 milliliters, just 15 milliliters less than the 190 milliliters in the small can he had. Seizing the opportunity, she proposed that they share the drink. Aju, not wanting to oppose her, agreed and drank half of the can. It was only then that he realized it had indeed become an indirect kiss. Caught in an awkward moment, Hakari began shaking the drink, but the can slipped from her hand and fell to the ground. Aju quickly offered Hakari a tissue to clean her juice-stained clothes. However, instead of the tissue, she took his hand and confessed her feelings, asking him to be her girlfriend. She explained that her love for him was love at first sight, and she didn't want to risk losing him to someone else so she decided to confess her feelings as soon as possible. Ecstatic about Hakari's confession, Aju was thrilled that a girl had confessed to him for the first time. Before he could respond, Inda suddenly appeared, interrupting their moment. Inda accidentally dropped a bunch of juices she had brought for Aju, explaining that she didn't know his taste preferences, so she got several types. Inda then confronted Hakari, leading to a verbal altercation between the two girls. Hakari attempted to lie, saying she didn't know that Inda liked him too. Inda then turned to Aju, clarifying that this didn't mean she had romantic feelings for him. In a state of confusion and indecision, Aju found himself torn between Inda and Hakari, both of whom he found attractive. Unable to choose between them, he visited the god of love seeking guidance. The god revealed that both Inda and Hakari were indeed his soulmates, suggesting a polyamorous relationship as a potential solution. The god explained that Asia's case was abnormal due to a mistake made on the day of his birth. The god was distracted by a show on TV while processing Asia's form, leading to the accidental inclusion of 100 soulmates. With this revelation, Asia was left even more confused about how to proceed. The god's mistake had created a complex romantic situation, leaving Asia grappling with an unconventional and challenging choice between his two soulmates. However, the situation was about to get even worse. The god explained the gravity of the situation. If a soulmate relationship didn't happen, a terrible fate awaited both parties' death. In other words, choosing one girl meant the death of the other. Faced with this grim reality, Asia became even more apprehensive about making a decision. Desperate to find a solution, Asia came up with a brilliant plan. His idea was to secretly date both girls without them knowing. This way, he believed he could save them both from the dreadful fate that awaited them. The next day, when Aju approached Hakari and Inda, Hakari greeted him normally, while Inda demanded an immediate answer to their agreement. As they looked at him, they noticed Aju's disheveled appearance, resembling that of a homeless person. Little did they know the internal struggle he was facing, torn between the love he felt for both of them and the devastating consequence of choosing only one. In a moment of courage, Aju reached out to both Inda and Hakari, expressing his genuine feelings. He told them that he found it incredibly difficult to choose between them because he cared deeply for both. He assured them that he was willing to do anything to make them happy. Aju then asked them both to be his girlfriends once more. Initially, Inda was about to protest, but Aju showed them two four-leaf clovers he had spent the whole night searching for. Realizing his efforts, the girls were taken aback. Hakari, demonstrating her love, told Asia that she didn't mind sharing him with another girlfriend because her love for him was immense. Inda, seemingly changing her mind, also approached him, expressing the same sentiment. And so, Asia's harem began, albeit with the knowledge that there were still 98 more soulmates out there waiting for him. The next day, Rintaro is seen talking to a pole which catches the attention of Inda and Hakari. Inda, feeling uncomfortable, suggests he talk to her instead. Hakari seizes the opportunity and holds Rentaro's hand, creating a wave of overwhelming sensations for him. 
Inda, feeling jealous, also grabs his hand, still pretending not to enjoy it. Despite the awkwardness, the three of them happily walk together to school. Upon arriving at school, they witness a boy being chased by the beautiful-looking vice principal, who's known for her speed as a former star sprinter. Hikari explains that if the vice principal catches anyone running in the school, she'll give them a kiss, a prospect that Rentaro finds emotionally daunting. They then proceed to spend the lunch break together. While Inda is distracted by a cat, Hikari feeds Rentaro an egg roll. He enjoys it so much that he starts crying. Inda, feeling jealous, reveals that she made cookies for him. However, when she tries to feed him, she accidentally hits him in the eye. Rentaro eats her cookie and compliments it, but Hikari takes out a baki snack. As she opens it, she finds that the ends are broken. Wondering how to feed him without dirtying her hands, she ends up feeding him with her mouth, which Rentaro finds incredibly cute. Hikari, trying to get even closer, starts biting the snack seductively. Inda attempts to join, but her hair gets in the way, and she ends up poking Rentaro's other eye, leading to a series of comical mishaps. Hikari notices his red eyes and worries that he might have a cold. Suddenly, she grabs onto him, suggesting that he can get better by passing the illness on through kissing. She attempts to kiss him, but Inda intervenes, suggesting they can't be sure he has a cold. Inda proposes checking his temperature through their lips, citing it as a family tradition. Hikari pushes her away, leading to a heated argument between the two girls. Rentaro finally realizes their intentions and offers to kiss them, confessing that he had been wanting to do it as well. Hikari, however, explains that he will have to choose who he will kiss first, reigniting their conflict. Rentaro intervenes, suggesting a solution he had planned the day before in his excitement to make them both happy. For the first kiss, they will keep who was kissed first a mystery. Each of their kisses will be considered his first, ensuring they have equal chances. To carry out the plan, Rentaro proposes using a mask and covering their ears, allowing them to randomly determine their standing positions. He will kiss them without knowing who is who. Then, they will randomize their positions again, ensuring he remains clueless about their identities. Hikari thinks it's a great idea, but Inda worries about the possibility of cheating. Rentaro reassures them by suggesting a pinky promise not to cheat. Inda is skeptical, but Rentaro promises to stick a needle in his eye if he breaks the promise, making the girls agree to the plan. As they start executing the plan, Rentaro, unable to see, struggles to locate them. In his attempt to find their positions, he accidentally touches Hikari's chest, instantly recognizing her. Frustrated, he realizes he has to restart the plan. In their attempts to carry out the plan, a gust of wind lifts Hikari's skirt, causing the cat to claw at it. Inda mistakenly believes Rentaro is touching her and kicks him away, leading to a series of mishaps. Every try ends in failure, and the frustration builds among them. Inda points out the flaws in the plan, angering Hikari and they start blaming each other, fighting over who Ritaro belongs to. Feeling responsible for the chaos, Ritaro runs off, calling for the vice principal. She appears and is about to punish him for running when Inda intervenes. Hakari pretends to see a school inspector, making the vice principal worried and causing her to leave. Ritaro explains his impulsive actions, expressing his love for both girls and his desire for them to get along. Touched by his sincerity, both girls urge him to kiss the other, not wanting him to waste his first kiss. Surprised by their selflessness, Rentaro hugs them both and comes up with another idea. He suggests a three-way kiss, initially thinking they wouldn't agree, but seeing their improved relationship gives him hope. Despite their initial embarrassment, the girls agree, and the three of them finally share their first kiss. The following day, at the library, Hakari looks for a cookbook to make more food for Rentaro, while Inda fights with her over a book about winning a man's heart through his stomach. Rentaro reminds them of their shared kiss, trying to make them get along. As he looks for another book, he encounters a girl who gives him the same shocking sensation, making him wonder if she's another soulmate. The girl backs away, and Rentaro realizes that she is a librarian. She communicates by pointing to phrases in her book. Rentaro finds this method confusing initially, assuming they aren't supposed to talk in the library. Rentaro then attempts to mime that he's searching for a funny story, Confused by Rentaro's silence, the girl asks why he's not speaking. Rentaro reciprocates the question, which makes her apologize and makes her find someone else to assist him. But he quickly stops her, telling her that he needs her guidance. With a written request, he asks for her recommendations for a romance story with a good ending. Shizuka, the librarian, helps Rentaro pick out many books, 
but he can't borrow them because his library card isn't ready. Instead, she lends him her personal book, and Rataro is curious about her name. She shows him her ID, revealing her name to be Shizuka. Rataro reads the book at night, finding it's about a princess and her knight. The knight is loyal to the princess and protects her from a dragon. They fall in love, but the princess is supposed to marry another prince. Rintaro cheers for the characters, but the story ends on a cliffhanger. The next day, Rintaro thanks Shizuka for the book and happily accepts the second one she brings him. Wanting to repay her kindness, he buys her a drink, and they discuss the book outside. Shizuka reveals it's her favorite, and is amazed at how well she knows it, using phrases from the book to communicate. She's grateful that Rintaro doesn't find her strange, mentioning she has never had a real friend before. Rintaro gets an idea and asks to borrow the first book again. The next day, Shizuka brings the third book for him, but he doesn't show up for a few days. As she walks around the school, she finds Rintaro with Akari and Inda. Rintaro looks sleepy, claiming he has been busy at night. The girls wonder what he's up to, but Rintaro continues to yawn. Suddenly, Hakari kisses him, saying she's giving him her energy. Rintaro hugs her, calling her his angel. Inda, wanting to do the same, goes in for a kiss but ends up headbutting him instead. Shizuka realizes that Rintaro must be too busy with his girlfriend to read the books she lent him. She reflects on how people find her strange because of the way she talks, even her own mother, who begs her to speak normally. Shizuka feels like nobody has time for someone like her. However, Rintaro seeks her out, expressing his gratitude for the books she lent him. He helps her install an app on her phone and reveals he manually typed out the first book which was never released as an ebook. Rintaro explains that with the app, they can communicate face-to-face -face while she talks, hoping it will help her with communication. Rintaro then tells Shizuka to try the app out. At first, Shizuka hesitates. But suddenly she tells Rintaro that she loves him. She quickly takes it back, but Rintaro reassures her, confessing his love for her too. Shizuka believes they are destined not to be together, but Rintaro is determined to overcome it, claiming their fate won't stop them. He introduces Shizuka to the other girls, asking to add her as his newest girlfriend. Inda thinks he's crazy, but Ki thanks him for staying with them despite finding someone else. Rentaro insists his feelings for them haven't changed, comparing them to an oil field and Shizuka to a new field. He promises to cherish all of them even more than before and pledges to prove it through his actions. To show his sincerity, he even vows to commit seppuku if he ever fails them, going so far as to order a special knife from Amazon. Inda reluctantly accepts, and Rentaro's group of girlfriends grows by one. After introducing his new girlfriend to both Karain and Hikari, Karain notices that the girl seems ordinary at first glance. However, shock sets in when she responds to their greetings with an electronic voice emanating from her cell phone. The two girls are taken aback, finding it quite eerie. Rentaro then reveals to Shizuka that he incorporated the names of her classmates along with data from the book to communicate with everyone. Rentaro explains to the bewildered duo that Shizuka uses quotes from her favorite series to communicate, breaking the fourth wall by referring to the third episode of the anime for more information. Rentaro goes on to elaborate on Shizuka's quirky habits, describing her as a book-loving librarian who makes cute toe movements while reading. He proceeds to share similar observations about Hakari, who has cute hand-in-mouth and finger-biting habits when thinking. Rentaro then turns his attention to Karain, revealing that she twirls her hair when embarrassed and happy with a compliment. His detailed observations make the girls feel self-conscious. As the conversation turns to kissing, Shizuka, using the term exchanging kisses, asks Rintaro if they have ever kissed. Confused by the expression, Rintaro is taken aback, but Shizuka quickly apologizes and clarifies that she lost her composure. Hakari questions Shizuka's interest in kisses, to which she responds that she plans to preserve her chastity until her wedding day. Rintaro reassures her, expressing a willingness to kiss her when she's ready. After this revelation, Hakari and Karain playfully argue over who had the idea of serving food to Rintaro first. While they bicker, Shizuka distances herself, observing the interaction without actively participating. Rintaro acknowledges that it might be challenging for Shizuka to make friends right away but expresses his preparedness for such situations. According to Rintaro, genuine connections arise when individuals show their true selves, making relationships less complicated. To lighten the mood, Rintaro suggests playing the monkey game with a twist, adding a tickling penalty for the loser. He reflects on the power of inducing laughter to bring out genuine emotions and hopes to make everyone laugh together through this light-hearted game.
Ritaro dubs their playful operation Let's Tickle and Laugh to Become Friends, and the two girls enthusiastically agree. The prospect of Rintaro tickling them becomes an exciting anticipation for the girls. As the game begins, Rintaro emerges victorious in the first round, with Karain as the loser. She eagerly asks him to carry out the punishment, but she claims not to feel anything. Undeterred, Rintaro teases her for playing hard to get and intensifies the tickling. Rintaro, understanding the situation, decides not to cross any boundaries and suggests playing another round. In the subsequent round, Rintaro wins again, making Hakari the new loser. Unable to contain her happiness, Hakari throws herself towards him, and laughter turns into playful moans. Hakari admits to being weak to tickling, and Ritaro reassures her, while Hakari retreats, expressing her overwhelming happiness. The third round sees Ritaro triumph once more, making Shizuka the next target. Before touching her, Ritaro realizes he's excited about this new challenge. As he begins tickling Shizuka, she tries to control her laughter expressing it through her electronic device. The tickling continues, and the other two girls decide their mission is to tickle Rintaro in return. But he eventually loses the fourth round, making Shizuka the winner. Shizuka begins poking Rintaro, and he laughs unexpectedly. Meanwhile, Hakari wonders why Shizuka doesn't take advantage of the opportunity to touch Rintaro more intimately. The tickling session concludes, leaving Rintaro laughing too much. He excuses himself to the bathroom. Karain, with a serious look, questions Shizuka about her behavior and suspects she might be acting modest because they are present. Shizuka denies it, but Karain insists that her actions speak louder than words, pointing out her reluctance to get closer to Rintaro compared to the other girls. Shizuka explains that she hesitated because Karain and Hakari were already Rintaro's girlfriends, and she didn't want to complicate things. Karain, however, asserts that Shizuka is now Rintaro's girlfriend as well and expresses frustration at seeing her avoid him without stating her true feelings. Hakari points out Karain's own habit of hiding her feelings to act nice, prompting Karain to tell her to shut up unless she wants to start a fight. She apologizes for the earlier events, and Hakari advises Shizuka to disregard Kin's words since she's often angry about something. Hakari emphasizes that Rintaro loves them more than they can imagine, encouraging Shizuka to express her desires. Rintaro, reflecting on the tickling incident, realizes he needs to act before tensions escalate into a fight. Despite his original goal with the monkey game to let them express their feelings, he recognizes the need for courage to bridge the emotional distance. Realizing he should give them some privacy, he excuses himself to the bathroom. Upon returning, Karain suggests resuming the previous punishment, as she doesn't think Shizuka's pokes were sufficient. Shizuka is surprised when Hakari asks if she wants to tickle Rintaro again. Feeling the support from the two girls, Shizuka realizes she must respond with something worthy of their kindness. Shizuka, encouraged by Karain's advice to express her feelings, decides to be honest about her desire to share a kiss with Rintaro. She confesses that the story about preserving her chastity until marriage was a lie and expresses her genuine wish for a kiss. Rintaro, understanding the truth, caresses her and apologizes for finding her irresistibly cute. Shizuka, undeterred, takes his hand, rubs it on her face, and finally receives the awaited kiss. Hakari, inspired by Karain's encouragement, decides to be honest too. Karain, becoming slightly jealous, insists she's not that interested, but Hakari prompts Rintaro to kiss her as well. Karain, despite her reluctance, allows the kiss, and after a cute moment, she admits that Rintaro is indeed very cute. And after their kiss, Rintaro looks up at the sky, commenting on how fortunate he is to have such great girlfriends. The next day, the three girls gather around their test results. Hakari wonders about his whereabouts. Shizuka mentions that Rintaro lost his cell phone that he holds dearly where he keeps photos and memories of the three of them. Rintaro then finds his cell phone on the table, but he's surprised to see another girl in the room called AI. Rintaro informs her about the test results, but AI dismisses the idea of checking, claiming she already knows she has the loudest grade. When they lock eyes, Rintaro feels a similar shock to when he first met his three girlfriends, sensing another soulmate. Rintaro invites AI to check the results together, but she insists it's a waste of time. Despite her reluctance, Ritaro apologizes and leaves the room. Upon returning, he praises AI's performance, especially since he came in 88th place. Ritaro was intrigued by AI's exceptional performance in all subjects. Shizuka describes AI as a reclusive girl immersed in her studies, while Karain mentions she has never exchanged a single word with her. People have talked about AI, highlighting her precision and efficiency in everything she does. 
In the biology laboratory, Ritaro pairs up with AI as his partner. While Ritaro goes to fetch the microscope, he observes that AI stands out from his other girlfriends. She embodies a more elegant and refined demeanor. But he notices she's actually copying cells from it, aiming for efficiency rather than practicality. Ritaro argues that it undermines the practical aspect of the class, but AI insists that redoing known steps is a waste of time. As they proceed with the experiment, Ritaro realizes AI's logical and cold demeanor has led to a less favorable reputation among students. While cutting an onion, Ritaro accidentally cuts himself. AI surprises him by suggesting she suck his blood as it would be more efficient due to saliva's antimicrobial properties. Ritaro, embarrassed, questions her actions, but AI calmly explains the efficiency of her approach. When Ritaro offers to buy her a drink, AI declines, explaining that soft drinks are not suitable for hydration due to their inefficiency. Ritaro then truthfully states that he just wants to get to know her better. Upon arriving home, AI begins her studies but finds herself thinking about Ritaro and their previous interaction. She reflects on why she sucked his finger, realizing the potential danger of infection. Determined to regain focus, she employs her strategy of writing the number pi repeatedly on the board. Despite her efforts, she remains distracted and decides to intensify her focus by writing pi even more. The next day, AI approaches Ritaro and confesses her love for him. However, she immediately rejects the idea of a relationship, stating that he should have refused her dating request. AI takes it upon herself to end the love that hasn't even started, insisting that romance only leads to marriage and childbirth. She dismisses the concept of teenage romance as nonsensical and declares they will never have an affair. Ritaro, undeterred, argues that her rejection won't end his feelings for her. He proposes a challenge, a one-day date. If he can't win her over in that time, he promises to give up on pursuing her. Ritaro extends his hand, signifying an agreement, and the scene cuts to a few days later, with him nervously awaiting AI for their first date. When AI arrives, Ritaro is captivated by her casual outfit. To her, his expression seems like a sign of sickness. She questions whether he wants to cancel the date, but Ritaro insists that doing so would be inefficient. In his mind, Ritaro plans to give AI the best time of her life to demonstrate the importance of enjoying moments with a loved one. They head to a carousel, but AI dismisses it as a pointless activity. Ritaro tries to take a photo with a camera, but AI considers it a defective object, as the loss of a photo would mean the loss of all records. Ritaro disregards the issue and asks her to say cheese. After taking the photo, he compliments her beauty, but AI continues to label technology as illogical. The two then decide to visit a haunted house. Upon visiting the haunted house, AI remains unimpressed, claiming ghosts are anti-scientific and don't exist. Next, they ride in giant rotating cups, and AI expresses her confusion about the purpose of such an activity. She questions the demand that led to its creation, finding no logical explanation. Ritaro agrees that people queuing up just to be spun around makes little sense. They proceed to a giant maze, and AI climbs a wall for a better view criticizing the inefficiency of encountering dead ends. Ritaro explains that dead ends are part of the maze's design. They then go to a ferris wheel, where Ritaro notices AI's fear of heights. He offers to sit next to her, and they touch hands. AI surprisingly intertwines her fingers with his. After looking at the photos they took, Ritaro points out a happy moment, and AI questions how he identified her happiness. Ritaro explains that it's easy to notice if one pays attention. Despite AI finding the day meaningless, Ritaro reassures her that her experience is valuable. As they burn the photos as part of a symbolic gesture, AI, recalling her statement about the photo's existence, stops Ritaro, revealing a concern about losing something valuable. Ritaro explains that it signifies her attachment to the moment, something now valuable to her. AI starts crying, moved by the realization. Ritaro comforts her, and she disinfects the tissue, jokingly suggesting she might lick it. AI then decides to pursue a romantic relationship with Ritaro, wanting to experience meaningful moments through this romance. Ritaro agrees, and AI, in her efficient manner, kisses him without hesitation. The two return home hand in hand. The next day, Ritaro shares the story with his other three girlfriends, and Karain, Hakari, and Shizuka express their approval, allowing AI to be included in the collection of girlfriends. However, AI was the only one who had been on a date with Ritaro. Because of this, Hakari asked to go out with him as well. Karain and Shizuka also expressed their desire for a date, and AI mentioned wanting the same since their outing had been before they officially started dating. 
Retaro agreed and asked where they would like to go. But Hikari, never missing an opportunity, already had a plan in mind and suggested the five of them go to a club for a pool day date. With the outing scheduled for everyone, Karain headed to a bikini store to pick out a more suitable swimsuit, as she had only ever been to the pool with friends. Initially, she struggled to choose a piece that suited her, feeling insecure about how she would look in a bikini. After searching for a while, Karain found a white one that caught her eye but still felt uncomfortable wearing it. But deep inside, she hoped that wearing such a beautiful piece might earn her a compliment from Rintaro. On the day of the outing at the club, Rintaro waited for the girls to put on their swimsuits. Shizuka, Hakari, and AI arrived first. Seeing them in bikinis, Rintaro felt he could relax. However, Shizuka felt embarrassed for wearing a one-piece swimsuit, explaining that she thought all students wore that type of swimwear, only to realize she was the only one. Rintaro then reassured Shizuka, expressing pride in her modesty and considering her a national treasure for her gesture. He soon notices that Karain was missing. But at that moment, she suddenly appeared still dressed. Rintaro panicked, thinking she hadn't finished dressing, but she explained she was wearing a bikini under her clothes because she felt cold. Karain, however, insisted that she would rest while the others had fun, but Rintaro and Hakari suggested they should leave and come back another day when everyone was well enough to enjoy the outing, which was rejected by Karain. AI then helped Karain by showing her a spot with more sunlight to warm up but Karain clarified they weren't close enough for AI to be concerned. Shizuka also offered to keep her company, but Karain insisted she would be fine alone. Ritaro then went to enjoy the pool with his other three girlfriends. However, the water current was too strong, and Shizuka lost control of her float. This led AI to think it was a perfect spot for survival training to prepare for unforeseen scenarios, so she decided to swim against the current. Meanwhile, Hakari used the current as an excuse to cling to Rintaro, making him uncomfortable. Seeing this, AI then decided to do the same to show her feminine side more efficiently and directly. However, the situation overwhelmed Rintaro so much that he fainted in the pool. AI then noticed Rintaro's weak pulse and lack of breath and the two girls quickly pulled him out of the water, deciding to save him with mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. Initially, Hakari attempted the rescue but lost focus, so AI pushed her aside, determined to save her beloved. However, during the mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation, AI also got distracted. Meanwhile, Shizuka was carried away by the pool current, unaware of what was happening with Rintaro and the other girls. She struggled against the current but drifted farther away, becoming completely lost. She then tried to call for help, but her cries were drowned out by the noise around the pool. To make matters worse, her float deflated as it passed the pool's edge. But Shizuka got out of the water just in time for her float to completely deflate, finding herself on the other side of the pool isolated like an island in the middle of the water. Realizing their efforts were failing, Hakari and AI decided it was more efficient to call for professional help. However, as it involved mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation, they opted to find a male lifeguard. The two ran in search of help but unfortunately encountered three shady guys. One of them showed interest in Hakari and tried to grab her forcefully. However, seconds before he grabbed Hakari, AI intervened, holding his hand to protect her. The guy mistook AI's action as interest in him, but she defended herself by hitting his eyes with an efficient self-defense move. The guy's friends then accused AI of violence, claiming that being a woman didn't mean she could do anything. The guys then demanded AI go with them. But AI responded that she would go with them if they left Hakari alone, instructing her to find a male lifeguard to save Rataro as soon as possible. However Hakari questioned why AI agreed to go with the guys after just protecting her. But AI explained that if something happened to Hakari, Rataro would be sad, and she didn't want that to happen. She then argued that Rintaro would also be sad if something happened to her. AI thought that since she had recently started dating Rintaro, it made sense that he would be sadder if something happened to Hikari, who had been with him longer. Meanwhile, the guys grew impatient and demanded to know if they were coming or not. But as AI began to agree, Hikari interrupted them, declaring that neither of them would go. Hikari explained that although their relationship with Rintaro was new, AI didn't fully understand how much Rintaro cared about all of them. One of the guys decided to force them, but at that moment, Ritaro appeared, standing protectively in front of the girls. Everyone was surprised by his timely arrival. One of the guys then told Ritaro to take his girlfriend and leave. But Ritaro explained that both girls were his girlfriends. Initially the guys thought he was lying to protect them and challenged him to kiss them to prove it, believing he couldn't kiss another girl in front of his girlfriend. However, Ritaro questioned the need to prove anything, but Hakari and AI, unconcerned, kissed him immediately. The guys, now convinced that Ritaro was telling the truth, left, grumbling about the bizarre relationships of young people today. Hakari then asked Rintaro how he woke up and how he found them. But at that moment, Karain joins them, commenting on how fast Rintaro was. Turns out, a few minutes earlier, 
Karain had been sitting in a chair, observing how the other girls were enjoying the pool without being ashamed of their bodies. She saw Hikari and Ai on the other side with the guy yelling because Ai had hit his eyes. Confused about Rentaro's whereabouts, Karain went to the pool with the strong current and found Rentaro lying on the ground seemingly lifeless. Worried, she mentioned that Hikari and Ai were in trouble. But when he heard this, Rentaro immediately regained consciousness and asked where the two girls were, quickly running in their direction to find and protect them. After explaining how she found them, Ai reflects on how efficiently Karain awakened Rentaro, and he thanks Karain for protecting Hikari. Later, Karain asks where Shizuka is, and Hikari mentions she hasn't seen her since they left the pool. Rentaro then recalls that Shizuka had a float and couldn't swim, and he panics at the thought of what could have happened if the float had popped. He rushes off to find Shizuka, who is stranded on a small island, calling for help on her cell phone. Unfortunately, no one can hear her due to the noise in the area. To make matters worse, her phone dies, leaving her unable to ask for help. Shizuka starts to cry, but Rentaro suddenly appears, calling for her from the other side of the pool. However, because the place is crowded and he thinks she is still in the water, Rentaro doesn't notice Shizuka on the island. Without her cell phone, Shizuka realizes she must use her voice. With great difficulty, she manages to call out to him, albeit very softly. Rentaro, who apparently has excellent hearing, finally spots Shizuka on the other side of the pool. He jumps into the water and carries her to safety. This rescue prompts Shizuka to kiss him, and they both blush with embarrassment afterward. Everyone finally gathers, but Rentaro says he wants to rest for a bit and asks the three of them to continue enjoying the water. He stays with Karain and takes advantage of being alone to tell her he knew she wasn't cold but rather embarrassed about showing her bikini, likely comparing her body to Ai and Hikari. Karain tries to deny it, but Rentaro points out that someone who's cold doesn't order a melon soda with ice cream. He explains that while Hikari and Ai have more attractive bodies, they are exceptions for their age, as most high school girls have bodies like Shizuka and Karain. Immediately, Rentaro asks Karain to stand up and he removes her clothes, revealing the white bikini she had seen in the store. This embarrassed her, but Rentaro comments that she looks great in that outfit and hugs her. They get so close with the hug that they feel each other's heartbeats, and he explains that he can only get close to Karain because of the way she is. Rentaro then tells her that it's not about someone being better or worse as everyone has their qualities, and he finds it impossible for Karain to be more attractive than she is. Next, they go to the other girls, who are having fun in the pool, and Hakari immediately compliments Karain's bikini, making her a little embarrassed. Later, with everyone gathered and ready to have fun, it's finally time for them to enjoy the outing. Where Rentaro takes advantage of the club's activities to share cute moments with each of his girlfriends, and to create special memories together as a group. Days later, at school, Rentaro is taken by his girlfriends who's eager to eat pancakes. On the way there he passes by the chemistry laboratory and sees a girl who gives him the shock that occurs when meeting a soulmate. The next day, Rentaro returns to the laboratory, hoping to find the girl but ends up finding another girl instead. She welcomes him, introducing herself as your cousin Kasuri, the president of the school's chemistry club. Kasuri offers him tea, but Rentaro tries to explain that he only came to the laboratory to look for someone. However, Kasuri insists that he should drink the tea. Rentaro then accepts and observes Kasuri's inventions while waiting for his soulmate to return to the laboratory. There she enthusiastically presents a human magnet remedy, a drink that temporarily magnetizes the iron in the blood, making the body act like a magnet, forcing him to drink the liquid. As soon as he drinks the liquid, his body becomes magnetized and starts attracting metals. But only later does Kasuri inform him that the drink will leave him constipated for three days. Kusuri then shows him another drink with the opposite polarity and after drinking it, she sticks to Rintaro like the other metals. However, Rintaro is soon enchanted by Kusuri's cuteness, but after a while stuck together, they realize that the magnetism is stronger than anticipated and they can't separate. Realizing that they would have to wait for the effects of the drinks to wear off, Rintaro panics and tries to free himself from Kusuri. To make matters worse, Kusuri then reveals that she was holding back from using the bathroom and has reached her limit. However, she soon remembered that she was wearing a diaper and relieved herself there. After the effect of the drink wears off, they finally manage to unstick from each other, with Rentaro a little traumatized by the experience. Fascinated by the effects of chemistry, Kasuri then introduces Rentaro to other experiments she created, such as a night vision potion and one that enlarges the body. There Rentaro observes her excitement and thinks about how Kasuri shines when talking about her inventions. He soon remembers that he went there to find his soulmate from the day before, but for some reason, he is falling in love with Kasuri. Noticing Rentaro's paralyzed state, Kasuri reveals that the tea she gave him when he arrived at the laboratory was spiked with a love potion. She then declares her feelings, explaining that she fell in love at first sight with him. But when Kasuri asked Rentaro to be her boyfriend, 
Ritaro tried to vomit, fighting against the potion's effects. She finds his reaction somewhat rude, and Ritaro explains that he's just trying to vomit out the love potion. Kusuri then becomes sad, thinking that Ritaro hates the idea of dating her so much that he's trying to resist the effects of the potion as much as possible, concluding that it wasn't strong enough. However, Ritaro clarifies that he just wants to get rid of the effects to accept her declaration, knowing that he is being himself. Suddenly, Ritaro starts having a convulsion because his body is rejecting the potion. So the scared Kusuri quickly grabs the antidote and gives the potion to him. However, the convulsion is so strong that Ritaro can't stop, so Kusuri decided to put the antidote in her mouth, passing it to Ritaro through a kiss. After the effect of the potion passes, Ritaro stops convulsing. But Kusuri is sad thinking that she won't be able to be with her beloved as her plan to win him over has failed. However, Ritaro explains that even without the love potion, he still finds her beautiful. Upon hearing this, she soon turns all red when she realizes that Rentaro's feelings are genuine and begs to date him, saying that she loves him as much as she loves her inventions. Suddenly, Kusuri starts changing, becoming larger and older than before, shocking Ritaro as he recognizes that she is the girl he saw in the laboratory the day before. She then explains that she must have taken a bit of the neutralizer when she passed it to him through the kiss, and that this is her true form. Kasuri then recalled that she once failed in creating an immortality potion, which resulted in her having a different appearance, and because of this, Kasuri could only stay in her real form for just a few dozen minutes. Rentaro is in shock with the discovery and understands that this explains what he was feeling for Kasuri after all. Upon realizing this, Rentaro pleads to date her, wanting to start another relationship. The scene then shifts to Ritaro telling the story to the two of his other girlfriends, asking for permission from all of them to accept the new girl. AI, however, says that dating several companions at once is more efficient, but Ritaro explains that he is not dating them for that reason. Kasuri soon introduces herself and talks about her passion for chemistry. Ritaro then explains that she is in this form because of one of her experiments and clarifies that Kasuri is already in her third year. She then mentions that she has some potions for the girls and starts by showing Karain a potion to increase her mommy melons, to stop her craziness, and make her more feminine, which stresses Karain out. She questions how Kasuri concluded that she needed these things and immediately blamed Rintaro and accused him of speaking ill of her. But Kasuri quickly assured her that Rintaro only told her that Karain is slender and beautiful. Upon hearing this, Karain immediately apologizes to her boyfriend for blaming him and Kasuri continues by offering a potion to Hikari that could make a person sexier. Excited about the idea, Hikari drinks the potion without hesitation, causing her clothes to melt, as there's nothing sexier than a person without clothes. Rintaro quickly covers his eyes and offers his sweatshirt from physical education to Hikari, who's excited about wearing clothes used by Rintaro. Finally, Kusuri offers a potion to Shizuka that gives her rabbit ears, making her incredibly cute. But as Rintaro touched her ears, Shizuka immediately turned red from feeling his touch. He then deduces that she must be experiencing the same sensation as a little animal when receiving affection, which leads him to take the opportunity to caress his girlfriend's ears. Finally, Kusuri gives a potion to AI, allowing the girl to manipulate her hair as she likes. Efficient things appeal to AI, and this way she could have more arms to move efficiently. Then AI grabs him to give him a kiss, while commenting that she likes the invention. Kusuri then shows that she has several potions, each with a different effect lasting 10 minutes. However, she explains that they have a side effect that increases the chance of going bald. Ritaro thinks it's too high a price to pay, but AI disagrees and asks if he would love her even if she went bald. He then responds and tells her that he would love her whether she became bald, fat, or even possessed by aliens. Later, the girls go for a snack, and Karain acknowledges that the experiments have their uses. She asks what would have happened if she had taken the potion that increases her mommy melons. So Kasuri then shows an illustration of the effect and says that she does various things with her potions, although she is more focused on the one she intends to use to join the research team as her dream is to enter and do even more incredible experiments. But suddenly, Kasuri feels the urge to go to the bathroom and decides to use the diaper, which scares everyone around her, but Rintaro tells her to go to the bathroom for a change. Kasuri then warns everyone to be careful because the tea she brought for Rintaro is different from the tea for the other girls explaining that it has to do with him being a man and the others being women. The girls then analyze the bottles and think that the larger one must be for the girls as it looks like a portion for five. Moments later, Ritaro returns, and everyone starts snacking. But Kasuri notices that they distributed the tea wrong, leading her to start freaking out and ask the girls to spit out the drink quickly. Kasuri then reveals that she had put a potion in Rentaro's drink to make him have an uncontrollable desire to kiss the person he likes. As her goal was to get a real kiss from her boyfriend, unlike when they did mouth-to-mouth -to, -mouth to save him from convulsions. 
Ritaro, however, says that he doesn't need a potion to want to kiss his girlfriend, making Kusuri very happy. But as she starts getting closer to him to give him a kiss, Karain becomes possessive and throws the girl away. Ritaro realizes that his other girlfriends are also acting weirdly, as they seem more like zombies. They all soon start chasing Ritaro in a scary way, and Kasuri realizes that she caused problems again with her experiments. Suddenly, Hakari tries to attack Ritaro, and Kasuri explains that it's the side effect of the potion. Perplexed, Ritaro asks why she wanted him to be that way. But Kasuri explains that it only happened because that potion was not meant for girls, as the libido of men and women works differently, causing them to only think about kissing the person they love, becoming true kiss zombies. She explains that if any of them manage to reach Rintaro, he won't be able to escape from their powerful arms, doomed to kiss forever. Although this situation seems like paradise to Rintaro, Kasuri ruins his dream by explaining that if they don't manage to neutralize the potion before it circulates through the girl's entire bodies, they will stay that way forever. Thank you for watching the 8 episodes recap of this anime. If you enjoyed this video and want more of it go ahead and hit that like button down below, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thank you for helping us in reaching 5,000 subscribers. Let's continue to grow this community and make it a bigger one.